All right, wonderful. My name is Charles Moreland. I am the executive director of Rochester Parkour. I am also a trainer at the Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, I'm a, a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Uh, today we're going to be talking about bodyweight strength. And this is a concept that can sort of be uh, a little fuzzy. A lot of people don't really understand what you're talking about when we talk about bodyweight strength. Bodyweight strength can be a lot of different things. Um, last year, Scott Hagnus came in. Uh, gave a nice and wonderful demonstration of how to do certain uh, body weight strength, such as the gymnastic levers, progressions that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, however, I'm going to take this conversation a little bit different. Uh, we're going to approach this in a way of helping you understand the mechanisms behind body weight strength and using that understanding so that then you can be creative in your own training, in your own practice, and say, okay, now that I understand how the body works, how we are going to uh, take concepts such as overload, uh, leverage in our body to uh, provide the stimulus to become stronger, um, stronger people. Um, another, another idea that I wanted to get across, why body weight? Uh, uh, Ren, uh, Rennie came in, uh, gave a wonderful talk on uh, weight training. And I'm sure, uh, I know Rafe is very big on, on deadlifts, squats. Uh, absolutely, they're wonderful, wonderful activities. So why why do we do body weight strength? And why not even just use free weights? Um, this is something that I really want to uh, get into a little bit more in depth. Uh, there are some body weight uh, exercises that make a lot of sense. A muscle up, for instance, is something very innate in the parkour world. Pretty much everybody wants a muscle up that when they start, they go, oh man, you know, the ability to get up and over is very important. When you see a tracer moving through an environment, they, they have wonderful, wonderful vaults, uh, they might be very explosive, and then they get to you know, a wall pass, and oh, anybody seen YouTube videos where they, they sort of like have that, that blackout second where like they get to the top and they're like, oh, I'm over it, and you know, it happens really quickly. Um, you know, and, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, it, that, that is a, a body weight application into what we do. Um, however, with uh, progressions such as the gymnastic strength levers, uh, planches, front levers, back levers, uh, handstand work, mana work, uh, with that kind of straight arm strength, you get wonderful neuromuscular recruitment. You get a wonderful ability of proprioception, the ability to sort of understand where you are in space. Uh, the core work is phenomenal. It's, it's something that you can't really do elsewhere. Um, and just understanding how to control your body and apply tension in different ranges of motion is incredibly, incredibly important. Um, also, with straight arm work comes increased flexibility, increased mobility, uh, and it, it, it works really well. Another thing I want to talk about, uh, Scott talked about this last year. He used the, uh, uh, the two-person scenario. You've got two exactly, uh, or, or genetically exactly similar males. Uh, they, one goes about the work of weight training, does barbell lifts, does deadlifts, uh, bench presses, that sort of thing. The other one goes and does gymnastic strength. When they come back at the end of the two years, they trade places. And one, uh, let's say the, the weightlifter goes in and attempts to do a planche and there's, there's no way. Uh, there's a couple of instances that it does work, but technically speaking, it doesn't really happen. Um, there are some sort of moves that do translate pretty well, such as back levers. If you can do a one-arm chin, which is still a uh, body weight exercise, technically speaking, you can do a, uh, an iron cross. But for mo uh, all intents and purposes, it doesn't translate. But you can take a, a gymnast, for example, and there have been numerous cases of, of this, where a, a gymnast goes in, to the weight room first time ever and does a double body weight deadlift. And people say, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, they go in, they, they can do uh, maybe a 1.75 uh, time bench press. And so the, the sort of saying comes about, it, it came from CrossFit first, but gymnasts have sort of used it as well, is that we can do what you do almost as good as you, but you can't do what we do at all. And that's really interesting, especially in the parkour world, because what we're talking about is how to apply that strength to what we do. And when, let's say, you are jumping from a box to another box, the second you accelerate off that box and you are in midair, there's a lot happening there. And let's say something goes wrong. 
Um, you know, it, like, there's a lot of forces at stake here where you suddenly need to, you didn't jump far enough, you have to pull your foot out and then you're falling backwards. And so there's a lot of changes that take place here. The ability to turn yourself in midair is very difficult once you have already have velocity in a certain area. And so that sort of core work, that sort of proprioception to know how far you need to turn is something that can translate from body weight strength into what we do as tracers. Um, uh, what we're talking about with leverage is the mechanical advantage of a joint. Understanding where, under certain stretch lengths uh, or certain ranges of your muscle, that they are stronger in some ranges than they are in others. Uh, where's Justin? Is Justin here? Justin, come on over here. Uh, take your shirt off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Face down, get on the ground. <laughs> cool. All right, Justin, I want you to do a simple push-up. Just one. You go up, you come down. Very good. Now, I want you to uh, go, uh, move your hands back just a little bit. Do the same thing. Up, come down. Move them back just a little bit more. Move them up, come on up, come down. Keep moving back. <laughs> Keep going. Yep, go. Get up! <laughs> <laughs> What, what we've just did, or what, what Justin just did, was take away the mechanical advantage of his shoulder. Also, his, uh, his elbow joint. That's what, you, you can get up. You can't put your shirt back on. I'm just kidding. Go on. <laughs> 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 um, you're taking away that advantage. And as your shoulder gets further and further away from your wrist, it becomes more and more difficult for your body to overcome that. Show me a good solid handstand. Come on! And take your shirt off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's happening right here? Oh, stay up. Yeah? Yeah. Come on down. Let's do this right here. Got that? All right. Handstands, I found. Uh, Scott, last year, uh, started talking about him. He didn't really spend a lot of time talking about the handstand. In my experience, when you're trying to go through uh, body weight strength, especially with the gymnastic levers, handstands are super important uh, because so many people don't understand how to do a handstand properly. Uh, Jeremy, this is about a Jeremy-sized box. I want you to come here and do a push-up. Feet Good. I'm going to walk, walk your feet up the box. Hands continue closer. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Jeremy, what do you feel right now? Um, on the shoulders? Yep. So Jeremy, what he, had this, he has this problem where he can't actually open his shoulder to that full 180 degree mark. Because of that, he has to compensate with his back by pushing it out, or he doesn't actually have activation in his, uh, his abdominals right now. Come on down. Positioning is power, but what the handstand teaches you is how to control your core. You can go sit down again. You have to understand how to control your core. Yay, Jeremy! You have to understand how to control your core. And unless you, or until you travel through that point, and let's say you, you're doing planches, you get to the end range and you're like, man, I can do a, a full lay planche, this is amazing. Um, it takes a lot of time. Understanding how to do a handstand properly requires a lot of core tension. And uh, the wonderful thing about it is that because it is directly, um, or you are directly perpendicular to the ground, it's not a strength exercise. It's skill work. But all the gymnastics exercises are skill work in a strength position. So understanding or having a good handstand can lead into a good solid planche can also lead into a wonderful front lever or an exceptional back lever. Okay. Thomas been working on planches for a while. Can you show us a good tuck planche? Uh, come on down a little bit. Come on down a little bit. Just a tuck. Just a tuck. Move your shoulders back a little bit. All right. Here we have a very simple uh, first form of the progression. His shoulder is a little bit extended uh, or a little bit pushed forward here. Um, his wrists are a little bit far back, and 
he's rounding his back because he doesn't have the ability yet to activate his core and push his center of mass back. Come on down. All right, wonderful. Shake your arms out. <laughs> Shake your arms out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right here, I want you to show us an advanced tuck planche. What he's going to do, straight arms. He's going to reach forward just a little bit. I know, I know. And what he's going to, here, one more time. Come on up. Butt down, butt down. Boom, right here. So, we've got extension uh, of, uh, or uh, a push forward of his shoulder just a little bit further. His back is now straight. His knees are pointed to the ground. This is pretty difficult for him to hold. <laughs> and it's very, very challenging. Come on down. Uh, very challenging. Um, but, Again, going from a tuck to an advance, as you push your shoulder further forward, you're stretching it. And that leverage becomes greater, and that mechanical disadvantage becomes greater. Feeling strong today, Tom? <laughs> Not quite. Not quite? All right. Do you have Is there anybody that has a straddle planche? Tyson, come on up. Go ahead, it's slow. Extend. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. oh, cool. All right, so again, extending his mass backwards, uh, his little legs in this instance, from a tuck position, moving out, moving out, moving out, increases uh, that mechanical disadvantage. And again, another strength progression. And then what we have here is a half lay. or a jackknife. Sometimes people do this with uh, front lever progressions and a full leg. Um, Mando work is, is something that I just want to talk about. It, it's very challenging. It's, I, I can't do a mana. <laughs> uh, I don't know many people that can besides maybe Steve Lowe. Um, but it's something that especially Steve and Coach Sommer stress a lot in body weight strength is that it lacks uh, or shoulder extension moving back behind the center of mass of the body. All right, yep, go and do it, I'll hold. Cool, boom. Woo so, a mana is kind of when you get your hips to the shoulders, <laughs> and then high mana is above that, and some, there is actually a guy who no, recently, keep holding. who recently competed a mana dislocate into a handstand. <laughs> So he went from this position and went all the way up and turned his shoulders around and ended up in a strict handstand. Do it. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So we've cued him in this position. We're going to let go and you're going to hold it, right? Right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you obtain a mana. Oh, yeah. His hips weren't even level and really, he hips above level and higher and higher. Um, Um, in my opinion, mana work for a tracer. Ken, you've got a, got a mana once? Um, a, a mana isn't necessarily uh, important for a tracer. Uh, it's very, very specific to gymnastics and gymnastic strength. Um, however, the principle behind it still applies. It's extension of your shoulder. It's also active mobility of your shoulder, meaning that you can pull your arms into that position um, and also hold strength or weight in that position. Um, that's something that a lot of people don't really apply. They might do L-sits, um, they might even try V-sits which still pushes the weight in front of you but only to a small degree or a small range of motion. Yeah. Uh, there's a, again, you need to be creative with what you're doing. Um, in, in my gym I invented a little exercise that we call butt scoots. Um, Hopefully I'm not going to break your mic. Uh, but something very similar, you can go uh, inward rotation, external rotation, butt scoot, butt scoot. <laughs> something pretty simple. Um, you can also do uh, uh, different ranges, pushing yourself forward more here to get the center, uh, center of mass uh, in front of your shoulders. Um, be creative with it, again, 
All I'm trying to get you to understand is the principle behind it, what is required in a body weight strength routine so that you don't have any... <laughs> Be creative, not stupid with it. <laughs> Planche first. Remember, whatever planche progression you are comfortable or are capable of doing. If you can't do a tuck, try an L sit. If you are unable to do an L sit, uh, do some other activities such as like ring dips, um, even doing just uh, static holds or support holds on parallel bars can help you. And that is another form of progression. Um, time each other and, and uh, switch roles. Find your one rep max, take two. Uh, two measurements so that you have something that's a little bit more accurate. Uh, take time in between to rest. Thirty-two. Shoulders. Move your back a little bit. Yeah. Like a deadlift. 